Sometimes things just work. And I drink coffee on my foot. It's all right. If that's the worst thing I do today, I'm doing all right. What if that was the worst thing that I did today? That'd be pretty awesome. Perspective is valuable. Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Tuesday. It is May 11th, 2021. My name is Jeremy. This is my first cup of coffee. Oh, wow, that's good. It came out perfect this morning. Oh. Is there any correlation between how good the first cup of coffee is and anything else? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe there's correlation there. I used to have a roommate in college who thought that on the days he had to wear a tie, if he tied it correctly the first time, he would have a good day. But the more times it took him to tie the tie correctly, the lower the quality of the day. He was an interesting individual. Later taught a class literally called Weapons of Mass Destruction for the chemistry department at college. He never really left. Good morning, Andrew, and good morning, Stacy. I'm sorry to hear that you are, your insomnia is upon you, Andrew. Not a good thing, not a fun thing. Um, well, then, then please pardon the insensitivity of saying that I slept very well last night. I went to bed early intentionally, um, about 8.30 because I just, I'd had a few nights where I wasn't sleeping well, the cat was bugging me, etc. And, you know, 5.45 comes real early. I said, let's catch up. And I did, and I feel good. Oh. Did you check out yesterday's episode with Melanie Gibson? Great episode, she shared it. She's been a wonderful guest through this whole process on the back end and everything. You know, Andrew and I had a call yesterday talking about a new project that we're looking at tackling. Uh, but we also talked a little bit about the show and, and some things that we do and some things that we might do. And, um, you know, you all get the best version of the guest. You get the guest when they're on, uh, when they're putting their best foot forward, when we've edited. We get the real version. We get to see how they are at email. We get to see how they or when they show up to the call. Do they show up late? Do they show up early? Melanie was early, I remember that. Check out her book. She's been, she's been crushing it with all that. I'm really impressed. Speaking of books and crushing, um, we've got the Adrian Paul episode up as a as a book you can grab either as paperback or Kindle version. And our next one, here's a hint, the next one coming out has three, three separate interviews in it. So I'll let you guess as to what that might be. What might we have arranged around a theme? And I spent some time yesterday working on another book and we're gonna see about having somebody else on the team Write the, write the original draft on that because it's boring. We did no end. All the hard work's done. I like doing the first part. I don't like doing the last part of pretty much anything. You give me a challenge. I want to start it. I want to set the algorithm in place. I want to set the structure. I want to develop the plan. And then I want to go do more of that. That's fine for me. I want to do the outline and the concept of the book. I want to think about who it's reaching. I want to figure out what we're going to do that's different from anybody else. I don't want to write the book. I will, but in this particular case, because it's based on some research and all the research is done. And my entire job is looking at, at the research bullet points and turning it into literally a single paragraph. It's making my eyes cross. So, nope. So we're going to have somebody else work on that. Uh, what else? 
what else happened yesterday? It was all calls yesterday. I had some good stuff going on. Um, I didn't leave the house. I went to the mailbox. Why? Because midday, I took my temperature. See, I'm gonna offer a bit of advice. Now, this is, I'm gonna choose my words carefully because the, the C19 thing, uh, in uttering those words, things get flagged and whatever, so I'm gonna be careful. Now, here's the thing. I have not heard anybody talk about something that you could do at home to establish a bait, to, to figure out when you might be sick. Oh, but Jeremy, that's not accurate. You're right, but it's consistent. And so yesterday, my consistent temperature, which has on this thing always been 97.5 to 97.7, always, showed up the first time at 98.5. And over the course of a few hours, did not drop below 98.0. Well, guess what? That feels like I might be coming down with something. So I didn't go anywhere. And I'm pleased to announce today that it's back to normal. Part, another part of why I went to sleep early. If everybody understood the idea of establishing a baseline for their temperature, and they checked it a few times a day with the $17 thermometer, and had the responsibility to, you know, address things as they started to come up, I think we'd be in a much better place. What else did I do yesterday? Well, I spent a bunch of time with the plants, watering, inspecting, almost everything is up. There are a few things that are I might need to replant some more seeds. Honestly, the peanuts have been the biggest challenge. It's driving me crazy. I've got three racks of peanuts over there. Three racks of peanuts. And I've got a total of two plants. So peanuts might not be my thing, which is really sad. But that's okay. Uh, what else happened yesterday? That's it. I worked. I worked more, I ate food, I finished watching Return of the King, the four and a half hour version. It's too long of a movie. I remember watching that in the theater the first time and at the end of the battle I was like, okay, we're done. And then the fade out on the rock. When, when Sam and, and Frodo are on the, the rock and the lava's around them. And it fades out. I'm like, okay, we're done. Because theater seats aren't comfortable. Most theaters, anyway. And then it just kept going and going and going. And I was like, oh my God, this is so long. I still feel that way. Stacy's encouraging me to contact the place that sold me the peanuts. Well, I may. I want to give it some more time. Because... There is indication, possibly, that the second round that I planted, there, there's, some, there's some lumps in the dirt, so they might be coming. We will see. It could also be that they don't grow well for me. Uh, what else doesn't grow well for me? Tomatoes don't grow well for me. I'm planting a couple only to keep the seeds going but I'm not gonna get good production and I'm probably gonna pull the first tomatoes that come off of it and save them for seed. Same thing with cherry tomatoes. Andrew says, hair. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> what else doesn't grow well for me? Hair. The irony is it does, just not consistently. <laughs> Love you too, man. <laughs> See, this is, this is the line. If you look, it's like... That's what I got. That's what I have. I've been, I've been losing my hair since I was 20. Maybe 19. The first picture I have where I know I was losing my hair, I was 20 years old. Nobody told me. 
I didn't know until I was in my mid-20s I was losing my hair. I had no idea. I'm sure everybody assumed I knew. I didn't know. How do you look at the top of your head? We didn't all have smartphones with cameras and why would I even, am I losing my hair? I'm sure in the current climate where people were jerks, someone would have said, commented on something under something on YouTube and said, you know you're losing your hair? I would have been like, what, really? Okay. Here's how I look at it. Our species, over time, has lost hair. Thus, I am more evolved than most of you. That's how I look at it. Not really, but it's fun to think about. All right, let's see what you guys gave me to talk about. Question, comments, feedback. Remember, this show is more interesting and more enjoyable when you leave me stuff to talk about. How do you do that? You leave comments in the comment section after the show closes. All right. Looks like I got some stuff here from Frank and from Stacy. Thank you to both of you. And Casper said morning. Morning, Casper. Casper's getting after it. I've been following him on social media and he's posted a lot of workout videos. Dude's going after it. All right. Um, so yesterday we talked about books and Frank was requesting people's suggestions on books and Stacy's given us two. For a non-martial arts book, The Giver by Lois Lowry. Forget the dang movie, forget it as a young adult novel. The story of a dystopian society is a beautiful reflection on giving, receiving joy, pain, and color. Side note, was inspired by a friend of the author who was an artist who was losing their sight. Beautiful book, the movie sucked. <laughs> That's my attempt at, at reading what you, what you, the way you wrote it, Stacey. I've heard of the book, I've never read the book. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm having a, a moment where I'm thinking about reading. One of my goals for this summer was going to be, uh, if not to build an entire tree house, build, to build a platform out back. And then lumber became $10,000 a board. It's insane. Uh, go to Home Depot. That garden bed that I was that I built, that I told you about, which I scattered a bunch of dry beans in yesterday. That thing, if I had bought the wood just to build this 8 by 4 bed, that was going to cost me like $75. Ugh. So... I missed this comment from Andrew. I, talking about losing hair, I had three people comment on my large forehead in one day. I went home and shaved my head that night. Stacy says, for several months we sold it in the adult side of the bookstore. Just, oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it's funny how w the way you market something makes a big difference. You can put the same book in a bunch of different places and different people are gonna read it. I, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful that growing up I was discouraged from seeing books as, you know, I needed to be a certain age or something to read them. Um, I think by the time I reached 10 or 12, I was reading anything in the, in the library. And what's interesting is I bumped into some stuff that I wasn't quite ready for at times. Hmm. And then one of the most awkward things ever was I was gifted a book that had a couple scenes like that. And I was like, oh. And then my mother needed something to read and she chose that book. So I knew that she read the book with the seat there. Yeah, it's awkward. Very awkward. And now for Stacy's martial arts book suggestion. 
It's a lot like dancing in Aikido Journey. It's both philosophical and reflective and accompanied by gorgeous black and white photos. Oh, cool. Aikido is interesting. Aikido seems to attract a different personality type than other martial artists. And what I find interesting is when I hear about Aikido from people, they talk about it differently than other martial artists talk about what they practice. And there are some times when it seems like that attraction of a different personality type leads to, ironically, more drama per capita than what I hear in other martial arts. I don't know why that is. But it is that is my observation in my limited experience. I, I When I think about the number of Aikidoka that I know well, it's a small group. You know, I don't think I've known more than five or six well. But two of them have had a lot of stories about the drama. But that second book sounds really interesting. And photos, black and white photos. Yeah. Cool. All right, and what else do we have? All right, so the, courtesy of Frank today, we have some quotes from, I don't know how old they were when they wrote them, but I'm going to guess old people because May is Older Americans Month. There are a lot of months. I mean, obviously there are 12 months, but everything is a month. And I wonder why. June is Jeremy Lesniak month because of my birthday. We are in my pre-birthday right now. My pre-birthday is, is a year before my birthday. Um, Back in my late 20s and early 30s, I used to joke that my, my pre-birthday was a month before I'd start celebrating. I don't actually do that anymore. But why not? Some people, no matter how old they get, never lose their beauty. They merely move it from their faces into their hearts. Martin Buxbaum. I really like that sentiment. I've known people like this. I've known... Some absolutely wonderful people who, yeah, their, their body obviously changes. Their body, let's face it, degrades. But they refuse to let their joy for the world change. I'm thinking of a couple people. And I've been very fortunate that I've had some of those people in my life. And they've helped shape who I am. And that's probably why I'm turning 42 and don't act it. I, I refuse. I will, I will be that weird guy in his 50s and 60s and older who's out doing new things and trying stuff and being goofy. And people, hopefully people say, I want to be like him when I get old. I think that's my, I think that's where I'm headed. And I'm totally game for that. I have no problem trying new things. Except skydiving or bungee jumping. I'm not doing those. Those are like the two big things that I'm not going to do. I have friends that do those things. I'm good. No need. Oh, and in sad news, um, this struck me much harder than I expected it to. Um, most of you know I love dogs. And if you're on social media and you're not following the We Rate Dogs accounts, you should be because you're missing out. And the We Rate Dogs account posted yesterday that the Dog Feelings account, the one that would, would write kind of silly, oddly punctuated thoughts as if a dog was saying them. That, that the dog in the profile photo holding the watermelon, uh, that dog passed away. 
And I was really surprised that that struck me. I was like, whoa, I've never met this dog. I don't think I ever saw a full-size photo of that dog. But I think over the course of a year or so that I, I read those posts, you start to build a, a picture of what the dog that those sentiments come from is. Now, of course, they're, you know, it's fictional stuff, but you get a picture in your mind and then they're gone. It's like when you watch a, a great movie or TV series, most, for me it's, it'd be mostly a TV series, where a character that you like that had been really fleshed out and acted well is killed off. I'm thinking, there was, um, in Sons of Anarchy, if anybody watches that, there's a character who, I was messed up for three days when that character was killed off because of the way they were and who they were and it was heavy. And there have been some others like that, but yeah. The account will continue. You should go follow it. Dog underscore feelings, I believe is what it is. Next quote. A young man is a theory. An old man is a fact. Edgar Watson Howe. I don't know how to respond to that one. A young man is a theory. An old man is a fact. See, I, I'd, I'd actually reverse it. Young tends to be based on where you are. And, and I guess old, too. There are, I'm, I'm sure, you know, kids think I'm old. Teenagers think I'm old. Once they find out how old I am, anyway. But, you know, I, I have people in my life in their 60s, 70s, and, you know, we'll talk about something and they'll say, how old are you? And I tell them, they're not, you're young. They're dismissive even, because I'm not as old as they are. And it's all relative. If you're, we're all gonna get older. That's, I mean, no, nobody's, nobody that I know of has figured out how to stop time or stop aging. Although I am, I am holding out hope. There, there, is, there is a chance that we solve cell degradation, or rather it's uh, um, aging, basically, uh, in my lifetime. And that way, hopefully, I can go and I'm ready. Because I don't know that I'm gonna be ready when I'm 80, 90, 100. There's a lot I want to experience. You don't stop laughing when you grow old. You grow old when you stop laughing. George Bernard Shaw, I've heard this quote before. This is perfect. We have a tendency when we are young, we are conditioned that you get old and you have to be serious. You have to, you have to take everything seriously and everything's about work and, and just being professional and blah, blah. Lame. It is not... Little kids don't play because they're young. Little kids are young because they play. Have you ever known a kid who was forced to grow up? Who had to do things beyond their age? They didn't have as much time for play. They didn't have the time to see the world in that way. changes things. And sometimes you see people, they become an adult, at least legally, and they're not done playing. Now some of those people do everything they can to recapture their youth and they make some questionable choices. And then you have other people, and I think I'm in this category, who just refuse to stop playing and finding joy and humor in the world. I am All right, here's a secret, not a big secret. You take a kid, put a kid out in the woods. What are they gonna do? They're gonna pick up a stick. They're gonna hit it on trees. They're gonna pretend it's a sword, whatever. I 
still do that? I do. I am not embarrassed to admit it. You put me even in the, in the backyard, I'm going to pick up a stick, I'm going to walk with it, I'm going to smack it on things, and I'm going to pretend it's a sword. And I don't care tell, that I'm telling you, because I find joy in that. And I believe that the secret to a good, long, healthy life is joy. Joy, laughter, humor, friendship. All of these things that are free. I had an observation last night. And tell me what you think of this. As I was watching the end of Return of the King, as the elves were getting ready to set off into the boat and leave Middle Earth, the boat they were getting was really simple. The clothes they were wearing were very simple. They were elegant, but they were simple. These are immortal beings who, because of that, have incredible skill in craftsmanship and plenty of time to do things. And much of what they had was very simple. Think of almost every representation of advanced races and advanced, you know, even humans from future, from the future in movies and in TV and much of the time we portray those beings in a very simple and elegant way. I think there's something to that. I think on some level we understand that the lives we live now are far too complex. I don't know what we do with that information but I think there's something there. It's something I'm gonna be thinking about. And our final quote for the day, and of course, leave me some stuff to talk about for tomorrow. Thanks again to Frank and to Stacy and to you for watching or listening, because yeah, you can get this in audio. We do it every weekday. Come join us, 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. Henry Ford. Of everything we've talked about today, nothing applies to martial arts more than this quote. How many martial artists reach a certain point and they, they never learn from anybody else? They never take an instructor again. They insist on being the king, the top, the, the senior in every way. And many of them will stop demonstrating. They'll stop showing. They'll stop training. Because why? Well, in their mind, there's nowhere else to go. When you look at the best at anything, most of them will tell you they constantly read, or train with or learn from others. They're not done. The best example in the martial arts that I can speak to because I've witnessed it firsthand is Bill Wallace. The man is in his 70s. He is recognized by many of his peers as the greatest kicker and maybe even the greatest fighter. He's up there on the list of all time. He is a phenomenal person, a kind person. He embodies the, the joy, the laughter aspects of what we've talked about today. But at the Superfoot conferences, what goes on? It's not just Superfoot techniques, and it's not just him teaching. He has other people teaching. At the conference coming up next month that I am expecting to go to, it's not set in stone yet, the slate of instructors include people teaching Muay Thai and Krav Maga and I'm trying to remember what else was on the list and who else was on the list. Of course, a bunch of Superfoot stuff. And in past years, we've had Judo and Jiu-Jitsu and boxing and a bunch of things. And you know what? 
Bill participates. Not in everything, but in some of it. Especially stuff that he's not great at. You'll see him and he'll ask questions and he'll stand in the back and kind of scowl, not in like a disapproving way, but in a, that's his, his uh, I'm trying to understand this space. If Bill Wallace isn't too good to learn from others, I don't know who, who is. White belt mentality. The more you are open to learning, the more you're going to learn. It's, the, it's that cliche story, your cup, you know, overfilling. Stop, my cup's too, it's, it's overflowing. Empty your cup, that whole thing. People don't understand how much I've learned in the martial arts because I'm not out there telling everybody. I know a bunch of stuff, but I don't care because I'm kind of selfish about it. I want to keep learning. I want to learn everything everybody has to teach me. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching or listening. I will see you back here tomorrow. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, everyone. Peace.